Hello, everybody. Sorry for delay this morning. We had a, a slight technical mishap, but here we are now. Okay, take a few deep breaths. I think we all need them today. And uh, try and get a bit grounded, put your feet on the floor, roll your shoulders and uh, just let it all go. Nice still breath. Just take another nice deep breath all the way in and hold it. And then let it go just really slowly. And again, once more, slowly breathe in. Deep as you can, then hold it. And let it go really slowly. Okay, so here we are, a new week and same old, same old, I think. I don't know, it certainly doesn't seem any better where I am and uh, maybe it isn't where you are either, but hopefully you're coping. So what did we wanted to focus on today was decluttering and it was actually interesting because I was thinking about it the other day and I suddenly remembered I'd written a chapter uh, for a book a few years ago on decluttering. And when I went to look at it, it wasn't just decluttering your cupboards. It was also about decluttering everything, your head, for example, your workspace uh, and um, your emotions. So lots of different ways to declutter because we immediately think about decluttering as opening the cupboard or the drawer and having a clear out. But actually we've got kind of cupboards and drawers in our minds as well that sometimes need to be cleared out. So I just wanted to focus a little bit about that too. So um, we'll talk a bit about what you've been decluttering, if you have, if you've made a stab at it. I did my, my bathroom cupboard, that was my first thing, and uh, started throwing away things from, well, I don't know how long I've had them in there, but an awfully long time. Some of the creams were hard, and uh, I have threw away some old toothbrushes and all sorts of things, it was quite good to just have a box of junk and have a clearer space. So that did me, make me feel good. But I think that um, right now we've got a lot going on. Some of us are working at home and when you're working and you've got your workspace, sometimes that gets a bit overcrowded too. So if you think about wherever, if you work, wherever you work and how often you clear out your papers and drawers. I know I don't do mine often enough, but when I do, it's a great feeling. I remember when I sold my house a few years ago, I had to literally clear the whole thing out. And that was very, it was very intense. It took me about five days to go through absolutely everything. But by the time I finished it, I felt almost reborn. So I think that decluttering physically as well as mentally uh, is a great idea. So right now, I think um, we have to look at what's going on in our space. So I think having some quiet space and doing some really good relaxation, whatever works for you. In my case, it's the Aziz app, which I really love. I just plug into that every afternoon and that's my little treat to um, withdraw from the world really and just have that time to rest and regroup. And that I find really helpful. So whatever works for you, but it is important to take a few little breaks and if you've got things really bothering you, then it's important to maybe write them down and um, find someone that you can discuss them with if they're really bothering you so that you can chew your way through it and come out the other end. So you don't carry it around in your head and ending up having a head full of clutter. So that's something that we don't automatically do, especially people that are on their own at the moment. It's really hard because you've got no one immediately to talk to. So it's really important to connect to friends and family. So you can still have those meaningful discussions. And if you are upset, that's fine. I mean, I think it would be unreal right now for us not to have appropriate emotions because we've got so many different things going on. You know, whether we're worried about ourselves, our family members, our children, our aging parents, our job, whatever it happens to be, it's just everything is so unknown. And I think trying to spend a little time each day thinking about how you can adjust your head to, I say being comfortable, but I don't think comfortable is the right word, 
but accepting of the fact that this is new normal for us. And we don't know whether old, old life as we knew it is ever going to be the same again. Uh, we hope it will be better in many ways, but we don't know when that's going to be. So I think we have to work out some kind of strategy for ourselves where we've got some kind of clarity in our head, some peaceful space that can help us to feel better emotionally and, and mentally. So doing stuff like clearing out your cupboards is something you can do on a physical level, just like exercise will help to release endorphins, those feel good hormones. Clearing out a cupboard or a drawer is also gonna make you feel better or maybe several cupboards or drawers. You have to, it depends on how much clutter you've got. But I think it is a good idea and it's a good practice to start working your way through if you haven't done it for a long time. And in fact, I was talking to um, someone I know the other day and she was planning to do all sorts of things last week. And she said, no, I didn't get started on any of that because I decided to clear up my house and it made me feel brilliant. So she said, I went through it from top to bottom. I cleared out all the cupboards and drawers. I haven't done that for years. It was a complete treat. And now it's done. I feel like I can make a start on everything else. So I think that um, starting wherever you feel is most needed and um, maybe just sorting out little things, maybe going through your jewelry and uh, sorting out the things that you love wearing, things that maybe you don't like so much, you don't wear them anymore put them in a different place or maybe decide to give them to other members of your family or charity shop or whatever it is so that you can just keep on sifting through things. I walked into um, my kind of walk-in wardrobe the other day and I looked at it and I thought, well, actually, I've been wearing pretty much the same clothes because I haven't been anywhere. No one's going anywhere. So I change my top every day and my trousers when they need washing. But apart from that, I looked at my cupboards and I thought, heavens, I've got so many clothes. And I could justify it when I was going everywhere, but now I'm going nowhere. I'm just looking at them thinking, well, I'm never gonna buy all those clothes again. Because you don't actually, it makes you reevaluate and think, did I actually need all that stuff? Probably I didn't. So maybe this is another thing that we've got to think about, uh, about just changing the way we live and behave. I'm sure I didn't need half the things that are in my cupboards, so and maybe you feel the same too when you look at it objectively. So I think that having a clear out, just keeping the things you love. I know I made a deal with myself a few years ago because I did have tons of things in my cupboard that I hardly ever wore. So I made a deal with myself that I would never buy anything unless I actually really loved it. So if I'm ever out shopping or shopping online and I see something and I'm not sure, I don't ever buy it. I'm quite disciplined about that. And also when you go and it, comes to your wardrobe and you're going through it, if you haven't worn things for a long time and you don't love them, then put them in your going out pile, whether it's going out to charity or giving it away, swapping out, whatever you're doing. If you love something but you haven't worn it for two years, then I would suggest that you put it in a separate place because you might find, I had a blitz a few years ago and I threw away two wonderful jackets that I didn't, hadn't worn for a long time because I thought they were kind of a bit dated. And ever since I've wished that I still had those jackets. So, you know, sometimes you shouldn't in just impulse and throw everything out. You maybe just put them in a suitcase and store them somewhere. And then you can revisit it a year later and think, well, am I going to wear this or not? And I think somewhere or other, I've got a suitcase with all my bell-bottom corduroy trousers. And I thought, well, one day they might come back into fashion. They're all in such good shape. So I'm not gonna throw them all away. I'm gonna decide whether I'm ever gonna wear them again sometime later and that time hasn't come, so they're still, still sitting there. But it is actually quite fun to go through your things. And as I said the other day, that sometimes your junk is someone else's treasure. And it's maybe you can go online with some friends, show them what you've got in the way of clutter and see if they like it. And if they do, then you can hold on to it until you see them or you can somehow manage to post it to them if that's possible. And if not, just keep it until you next see them. And then you can have a, a swapping session. So that's sometimes great. I've done that quite successfully in the last year. And um, I'm richer for two amazing handbags that I use a lot and uh, somebody else was about to throw them out. So, okay. So, and then when it comes to emotional clutter, I think that you, if you've got someone, if you're, when you're being still, you can think about what that 
might look like, what is bothering you in your head. And then once you've identified it and it's not all still in your head, it's written down on a piece of paper, then I can probably make some suggestions about how you deal with it, depending on what it is. So sometimes there are um, ways of dealing with negativity, which we can do in another session. Um, it's kind of right brain, left brain, and how you, it, it's a system developed by an art therapist who um, helps to deal with getting rid, rid of negative voices. And um, also a coach I had a few years ago, she wrote a book um, that was all about getting rid, rid of negative, negativity and negative voices as well. So we might actually be able to invite her to one of our sessions and she can enlighten us much more. So um, I think a cupboard or a drawer is a good place to start, but you need to think about all the other different aspects in your life. And if you are working at home, if you made yourself a workspace at home then I would suggest you try and keep that as neat and tidy as you can sometimes that workspace is also a living space so you might have to keep putting everything away but if you do what I suggest you do is just get a big container or a washing bin one you know those one of those plastic baskets that you keep your washing in so when I have to carry my work stuff I put it all in there so it's all neat and tidy and in a cupboard and when I need it I just bring the basket out and put it on the table and I can start using things again so it just depends how much space you've got if you've got space if you've got an office at home then obviously just get that all set up and organized so that you're ready to be active in the workspace and um, similarly if you've got you don't work and you're doing crafts then you may need space for your craft bins I've got a little um, puffet thing that opens up so I can put all my knitting and wool and needlework and bits and pieces in there so that's all kind of all hidden away so it stays tidy so just finding places so you don't end up creating more clutter because being surrounded by clutter can be a bit disconcerting it's really important to be in a nice tidy ordered environment so i would definitely suggest that you try and get yourself um into that point and, and don't get overwhelmed by it because you can just take it one room at a time um, and I know that um, Lisa, who's on the call today, her daughter Neely specializes in decluttering. So um, one of these days we might invite her on to, to um, give us some hot tips on how we can deal with that. Because obviously I'm not an expert on clutter. I just happen to written one chapter and I've had a lot of life experience and I know that decluttering is therapeutic. So let's turn over to you guys and see what have you been doing since we were together last week and in the way of decluttering. Has anyone made a start on it? Anybody got any, uh, anything out of their drawers or cupboards? Who would like to go first? Lisa? I can't hear you. Are you okay. muted? Can you oh, hear me can... now? Yes, I can. Hi, good morning, everybody. Sorry, it's the time it framed us off. So I just got in late. Um, one thing, um, my daughter Neely, who is the professional organizer has taught me and it really, really works is my t-shirt drawer is always a mess. I keep folding, putting back, folding, putting back. And so what she taught me to do was to take the t-shirts and roll them in a row or flat, you know, kind of halfway like this. And then you stack them like this in colors. Like I have all the white, then it comes to black, gray, whatever. And then I can see all of them and they, it works. It's been amazing. Yeah, that is amazing idea. Actually, I, yeah, I quite like color coordinating, color coordinating as well. Even my hangers in my wardrobe, I like to kind of put the things together. So they're all kind of, well, that's yeah. just, very, yeah. Very, it's very Marie Kondo. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. indeed. <laughs> So, who's done anything yet? Have you, or have you got a back off? Are you not really feeling like you can face your clutter? How do you feel? Tell me. Well, we've been doing quite a bit of decluttering, well, I say decluttering, sorting out anyway, because we've been having some new furniture. So that was a, an ideal opportunity for going through big display cabinets and sorting everything out. And then what I'm trying to get to is my office because it's cluttered. So that's what I'm working towards now. Yes. And I'm determined to do it. But otherwise, on the whole, most things are pretty okay, I think. 
but I definitely yeah. want to sort my office out and my husband's office. <laughs> When I went through my office files, I think that's a great idea. When I went through my office files, when I moved house a couple of years ago, I had stuff in those files from the advisory service I used to run 20 years ago. And I just had, I was like, every time I moved, I couldn't part with it. So I actually decided I would go through every single file and look at what was in there and only keep what was current. I had mountains of paper. It was just mountains of paper. It was amazing. I don't know why we keep, we keep things. We anyway, who else? Who else has um, had a stab at this? Julie? I've done the computer files. Oh, God. Sorry? I'm sorry, Jules. I'll let you talk first. Oh, no, carry on. Honestly, I, I... So I did my computer files at the weekend because I realised it was such a mess. And how many times did we go through I went through my emails. Like my emails go back 10 years on Gmail. It's like I did a huge deep... And actually, my computer runs so much better now. But it's one of those things that you can't, why am I keeping emails that are from, you know, 2012? It just seemed like the most ridiculous thing. So I've managed to keep myself up to 2017. <laughs> it was huge. It made a huge difference. And also trying to sort some of the files out. So many times I don't, well, I'm not, I'm trying to be really organized and back up every, every Sunday I do a backup, but the backup's not very tidy. So I'm trying to sort that out now into it's really immaculate so it doesn't have a problem going forward. So that's one of the things. I have the problem that my living room, my dining room and my office are all the same room. So I have to be really tidy when it comes to my desk. I have a cupboard. My desk is a cupboard that was specially built and now everything just gets put in there and I close it up. But that sometimes everything just gets thrown in. So I realise that it's one of those things that we just need to keep on top of. But it, at the moment, it seems really important to keep it clean and tidy because I'm not going anywhere else. It's not like I can go out in the evening and hide away from all the mess. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's right in your face. So I think that's the great, I think the computer, yeah, I didn't even mention that, but it is, um, and you don't see that. It's all taken away. Um, but you're right. We all need to do that to... Um, I just need make to our to machines more efficient apart from anything else and faster as well who else has done anything well i've been batch cooking and so i've not been doing a lot of tidying as such although i've got this rule that every day i get up i make my bed and that gets my brain in order to do the other things around to stop me getting mooched and that horrible feeling of feeling that you've not been out and just go out to the back door even to get some fresh air that sort of thing but tonight I've got a job of a list I've got a loads of paper and I've got a shredder and my job tonight while I watch tv I'm going to shred all that junk mail that I don't need yeah exactly. I think that's going to make me feel a hell of a lot better I'm sure it will I'm sure it will and I think it's a great idea to if you can sift through things while you watch tv as well and Otherwise, if you if you can't, then just put on some really good music, something that you love, and sing along, and that will help you feel high. Because <laughs> I think music does that. And uh, yeah. Well, I, well, tonight I've got an exercise class at six o'clock, indoors with my normal exercise group through Zoom. Oh, so brilliant! I'm going to move the living room around and see how that goes. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important to stay, I've heard other people saying that as well, it's really important to stay connected with the, with your groups and your friends. And if you haven't got an exercise class with friends, then maybe just join up with some friends on Zoom and do whatever it is, hula hooping, skipping, whatever it is you happen to like doing, jumping around to music um, so that you can kind of all do it together. Or just meet up and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine together and um, as if you were out together. So I think that, in fact, there was an article that was published yesterday. I think it was a Harvard article. I've saved it somewhere, but I haven't fully read the whole article yet, but I scanned it. And it said that they'd shown that being connected on things like Zoom on video made people really happy. It made them as happy as actually being together physically. So it's obviously a really good thing to stay connected on FaceTime, WhatsApp and Zoom. So just to maybe bear that in mind so that you can um, do more going forward because this is probably gonna go on for quite some time. 
So okay. just thinking about how you can do that. If you want your own Zoom account, you can get one. I think we said the other day it's free if you have a 45 minute session. You have to pay for it if you want longer. But there are other ways. My, I was on the um, phone to my son the other day and he said, well, why do we need Zoom? Why can't we just do FaceTime? And I said, well, you can't do that with the whole family. He said, yes, you can. Yeah. Just this, that, and the other. And before I knew it, my other kids were on there. It was just amazing. I'm not quite sure what he pressed, but I need to find out. Oh, but... was, that on, was, was that on WhatsApp? Um, you can do it on WhatsApp. No, that was on FaceTime. Yeah. Oh, can... right. The problem with FaceTime is you all have to be on Apple. You can do it on WhatsApp. So all right. you call the first person. So I'll tell you how to do it because I had to discover this. You call the first person. and then On WhatsApp? On WhatsApp. And then you go to the top left-hand corner. No, right-hand corner as you're looking at it. And there's like a little person with a plus. And you hit okay. that, put the next person in and then the next person in. Oh. So it's just like making a group. It's very yeah. small on your phone. It's quite interesting because on your phone, and it's not too bad with two, you know, with two or three of you. If you add four, they become tiny on my little phone. And of course, WhatsApp doesn't work on anything other than your phone unless you have it on um, Chrome on your computer. So I use I'll it. I'll try as... that later. Yeah, but it does work. Ah, that's there's interesting. Also, there is also lots of apps coming out. Uh, I've seen, I've been told about the, uh, the like family apps that you can download and you can either play games or quizzes or whatever you do it as a group mm. in different okay. yeah, and it's, it, cool. it's a lot of fun you could do singing also well, oh, that's brilliant. that people seem to be using the problem is everyone i know seems to use a different one so i've had to try out so many different things to talk to so many different people <laughs> So the other night I did like Zoom, house party, Zoom, and it was like, oh God, party. now we're on my FaceTime. Somebody else was FaceTiming me, and it was like, everybody was really busy on Saturday. I know. I just said, have I got the time to do anything today? I've got so many meetings. I had, a, <laughs> an, appointment, I had an appointment with my dermatologist this morning. That's great. At 12, 12.30, he phoned me and was asking me all about my, my skin, because I have psoriasis, which great. is really important. And uh, yeah, I said I can send you some photos if you like. But uh, as he works at our doctor surgery, he said I'll just see it next week. Don't worry. Uh, so it's quite it's all right when you've got a skin specialist. But I was um, someone the other day had an appointment uh, with a gynecologist. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my husband, how can you see the gynecologist on Zoom? Like no, how does that work? no thank you. <laughs> a little awkward, I feel. <laughs> How do you get the angle? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, but... <laughs> bit mind bending, but yeah, I think it, it does have its limitations. But there clearly are some amazing. Um, there'll be some amazing tech startups that bring us things that we never dreamed were possible, mm -hmm. like playing games mm -hmm. with family that are in far flung places or you know wherever. So I yeah. think that. Um, and in fact, I think what we're um, trying to compile a directory. So if you happen to find anything amazing in terms of an app that you enjoy, if you can let us know, because then we can add it to our directory to let other people know about as well. So that. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm do doing a live meditation later at six o'clock. So that'll be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you cool. that the other day to me and I was going to, that was one of the things I was going to talk to Marion about, see if we could get somebody to come and do a live meditation. Oh, it's brilliant. A 20 minute guided meditation would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. I know, yeah, I know someone who could do that, definitely. Yeah, just if you just her name's Vivian. So if you remind me, we'll book her in. Um, and also, I need to go. Over, we've got quite a few other people who offered to do Louise off to do mindfulness. Um, Brilliant. We've got quite a few people who've offered to do things. Um, psychologist has offered to do mindset. Um, a few more. Anyway, we'll, I'm looking for different people to. Um, Positivity. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and she specializes in reframing and positive mindsets and she's offered to come and do a session for us. I yeah, think that, uh, yeah, lots of different ways that we can uh, get help. At, at the moment, okay. Headspace, if you log on to Headspace and you work for the NHS, which I do, they're doing it free for NHS staff at the moment, if anyone. And that's really good. Now. Yeah, um, and it's good for people that find it tricky to sleep and things honestly I was with, and not that I find it difficult to sleep I can sleep like that but um, I used it just to see what it was like and I, I don't remember listening to the next bit I was just gone 
just absolutely fast asleep and waking up in the morning. It was so relaxing. Excellent. To it and yeah, no, keep that's, it. That's, that's a popular app. Um, quite a lot of the women on our program like that app as well. Yeah, so it's fantastic. great that they're offering it free to NHS staff. It's amazing. Yeah, it's brilliant. You also see that become that we've worked with before the clothing company, you know, that make the vests and underwear that helps you with hot flushes. If you work for the NHS, they were offering two free vests. Oh, wow. That's very good. We become co uk, I think it is. What's it called? We become. We become. Yeah, I got you. And it's either .com or .co uk. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I saw that because I get their newsletters and they were offering NHS workers two vests free. That sounds really good. Thank you. You obviously have to put your NHS number in there somehow so they can yeah. verify. I couldn't work out how to do it. I tried to see if I could do it. Um, <laughs> no, my brother works for the NHS. I don't think he really needed a menopause. No, but it really, <laughs> you could be handed to get his number, wouldn't it? <laughs> Oh, oh. Brilliant. Uh, Anybody have um, any tips or anything that they've been doing that's working for them? I think just trying to keep busy yes. um, is definitely key. And because I live alone and I have not spoken to a human being face to face apart from the security guard who was wiping my shopping trolley the other day with a disinfectant. He's about the only person I've spoke to. Because I've been to our tea times. There's yeah. Here to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is hard. I think the, that's why you need to keep connected on video with everybody. Definitely. And I think even if you, even people that have got other people at home, sometimes they find that's tricky. They've got children at home, sometimes grown up children at home and partners, and they've got no space when they're used to having space. Mm. So just talking about that um, and sharing with other people who are in a similar situation can be therapeutic in itself as well. Oh, yeah. I did, I did laugh on Facebook. I don't know if everyone saw it. There was a picture of a woman digging a grave outside and uh, the husband was inside and said, I don't know what vegetables she's planning to put <laughs> <laughs> to day six of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> she was like digging a grave for the husband. It did make me laugh. <laughs> can, I, can, I jump, can I jump in here? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, uh, can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Great. I'm not sure. I uh, did my um, spare room out. I tidied everything up. Nothing came out of it, but I tidied it up. And I came across these, Marion. Uh, can you see it? All is well, yes. That's the book by um, Louise Hay and Mona Lisa Schultz. And that one's The Power of Your Other Hand. That's um, self healing. And then that one. That's the visioning. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, really they're really good. I'm going to, to, do, to read them again. I just feel I will learn a lot from them, if you like. Yeah. The visioning, we're going to do a visioning session. The visioning book is amazing. Um, yes. Yeah. Power of your other hand is great if you've got lots of negativity going on in your head or if you're not feeling well, it can help you to feel better. And all is well. The, um, I think I mentioned that the other day. That's the uh, yeah. book. It was written by Louise Hay, the healer, and Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz, giving all the medical backup to what Louise Hay is saying. And it's got all the little affirmations at the back that you can use if you're feeling... If you're feeling stressed and uh, anxious and negative, then you can take those affirmations and just stop and do some mindful breathing and repeat the affirmations and then do something mm -hmm. nice for yourself to kind of just in the short term get rid of the negativity and feel better. So, there's some, there's yes. some, there's some Louise Hay um, affirmations on YouTube that she does. Must have recorded a long, a long time ago, but I've listened to them a few times. She's really good. Excellent. Yeah, no, she is very really good. Look out for that. I know they're on YouTube. That's really yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a really good day today, but I'm not bad, bad. I'm just a little bit off it. But um, I'll come round. I think it's hard because you're on your own as well, aren't you, Ellen? I am indeed, yeah. But I take care of an old gentleman. He, I think I might have mentioned to you, yeah. um, Marion. Uh, I go three times a day. He's literally about 40 foot away when I go downstairs. And I 
cook his meals, his memory is going now and, you know, he needs caring for. So in this time we're in right now, his family can't visit. So it's right. just me and me and him. Mm. Yeah, you know what, in a way, at least that gives you something good to do. It keeps you busy and it also means you're doing something good for someone else. So you're not dwelling on all the time on just being alone. I think that's right. Helpful. I know that may, it may seem like it's a lot going on for you at the moment to do that. But I think we've got to somehow mm. do whatever's sent to us, haven't we, really? And mm. our little trench that's been sent to us and somehow we have to work out how do we dig ourselves out mm. of it. Um, yeah. And that's maybe what's going to help to make us a bit stronger going forward. I think trying to keep yeah. a positivity, but it's not knowing when the end is. And we've just had an email from Public Health England saying that we have to work our bank holidays, or at least one of the bank holidays this year, the cancel in April and possibly May bank holidays So for NHS. So we'll have to work no matter what, um, which... It's a little thing, isn't it? But it's just, you know, you look forward to those little things, don't you, when you, you're working. So having this week off for me, I'm trying to get myself re-energised, re ready to go back to work next week, because I think it's going to be tough yes, for everybody. I'm, I'm you know? sure it is. I'm sure it is. It is very mm -hmm. tough. I would make the most of every single second this week. And also any time you get off as well to have some structured way of relaxing, whether it's reading a book or listening to music or doing your headspace or whatever it happens to be, but just to keep doing things for yourself to make mm. yourself feel a bit better. I think that's really important. Yeah, my daughter signed me up to Disney Plus and oh my God, you can have a little sing song with those. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh. just on your own. Nobody mm. can hear you. I'm sure I sound like Celine yeah. Dion, but I haven't recorded it. <laughs> No, yeah. I sound at anything but like Celine Dion. My singing's for my ears only, but I still enjoy it. But I, oh, what I was saying the other day was I was I've got an iPhone that has um I think if you've got an iPhone 10 or 11, it's got oh. little um animal faces on it that you can put over your head. And I was on I was on the phone to my little granddaughter, and all of a sudden I turned into a monkey, and then I turned into a lion, and she was hysterical. Oh, that's hysterical. So if you've got a phone like that and you know anybody little, you can entertain them. So it's, uh, yeah, it's or even a big, a big person. Go ahead, Julie. Yeah. I, I was going to say, it's my granddaughter's birthday on Friday and I can't go and see her. So I'll have to, she's 14 though. So she'll just say, oh, stop it, Nanny. You're not being cool. <laughs> well, my little grandson is three at the weekend and he can't um, have his party so we're trying and he's got chicken pox as well so he's like trying to tell him his friends aren't coming to his party after all it's going to be a bit tricky but um, I'm sure we'll get around it. Did you say Nova? Yes. Oh, go ahead Nova. I'm unmuted. Is this working now? Yes. <laughs> we can see you and we can hear you. Oh right I thought I tried earlier but then the yellow box didn't come around me so I obviously didn't speak loud enough. <laughs> Good. Um, I've been doing, uh, I sprang into life then again when you were talking about the singing because oh, yeah. I'm very musical, that's my job, and my daughter loves singing as well. So we've been recording a Disney song a day with a oh, full, full choreography and costumes and everything and putting it on Facebook for my friends. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they now literally, they're bugging me every day, when's it coming, when's it coming? So I've made a bit of a rod for my own back now. We were going to do <laughs> days and we've done four. And today I'm just like, oh, what are we going to do today? <laughs> wow. Can you, could you share your screen? Could we see one? Uh, no, I, or, or maybe you could send, will you send us a link? Yeah. Can I send it just to your usual email address, Marion Stewart? Yeah, send it to me. Yeah. Copy Julian as well. Okay. And we'll, um, we can promote it for you on social media. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to promote all positive things I can find at the moment, just to make people stop and smile. Yeah, well, people say it really cheered up their day. Um, yeah, that'd be brilliant. I tend to have a sort of, my daily thing is like, wake up and feel quite worried in the morning, try and do some exercise or something, but I still hold on to that jangly feeling till about midday. Don't know if it's hormonal as well or what, but then after about midday, once I've got more food into me and I've done some exercise and got the thoughts, go, you know, better thoughts going, and I kind of calm down for the rest of the day and do something a bit more productive. But yeah, the mornings are still very difficult to know how to direct myself. 
that's when your cortisol levels, your stress hormones are at their highest in the morning. So mm. they just gradually go down, I think. They do. They gradually go down as you get to the evening and then they're at their lowest. Do you, I mean, I do don't you... find the aerobic exercise very helpful in the morning. I've been doing the PE with Joe Wicks with my daughter at nine o'clock. <laughs> my me. daughter's been doing that. It's, yeah. quite, it's fantastic. But if I am stressed anyway, it makes me a bit more jangly. I almost need exactly. to do more in the morning. That's what I was going to say. If you've got high cortisol, aerobics can make it worse. Oh, so okay. You're better off to do it. right then. I haven't done that this week. I've yeah. done some yoga this morning instead. Exactly. Do the yoga in the morning and then you could do the jumping around later on in the day when your cortisol's gone down. That's the best yeah. way around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So, and there are adaptogenic herbs as well. Do you, did you take any um, ashwagandha or rhodiola or anything well, like that? I haven't gone on to the herbs. I was just doing the vitamins. Um, right. Yeah. Well, you can try something like that. I find um, I like ashwagandha and rhodiola and they're pretty good at helping you to calm down. You, Are they some the repetitive thoughts? Because even when I'm not having a result in my body, I can just feel my brain ticking round and round on repetitive thoughts all the time. They, mm. you, certainly, you can certainly try. Um, but the affirmations, maybe we'll do a whole session on that as well, Julie. Like how to deal with when you start getting all this noise in your head and um, all the different things that you can do to deal with that. Because it is, there are lots of things you can do to calm yourself down, but it, you have, and what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Yeah, and one day to another, sometimes yoga will work beautifully, and other times I'll feel physically relaxed from it, but still haven't had the mental switch off, you know, and even though my breathing's slower and my body's relaxed, I still have these sort of annoying... Did you ever try the Pazizz app? Yeah, I, I, I've got Pazizz on my phone, I do that sometimes, I do... Um, that might, that might take you into uh, that for me that switches off the head noise it's great it's for my sleep actually so perhaps i should just do that during the day there's, more. A, nap, there's a nap program for during the day yeah. as opposed to the sleep program try that i'll try headspace whatever works for you Thank but you. i find the, definitely the adaptogenic herbs and no leaping about first thing in the morning Right, because I thought I was helping myself last week. I know. Last week I was kind of getting more and more jangly doing all this pumping exercise. Yeah. 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 Just uh, really together today, really, yesterday, really, and thought, I don't think this is helping. <laughs> no, it's really okay. interesting. So, anybody else got anything to contribute today? Uh, just that um, we fit, I don't know if anyone's got it, but I've been playing with that as well. That's really good fun. Because you, you can play with a oh what's that? You can play with a you know um, different character each time, and you just feel like you're playing tennis or you're doing exercise. You can do yoga, you can do everything on there. It's brilliant. Yeah. So, you know, and it's just another thing to do to you know keep you busy and keep you moving. Yeah, no, I, I, we fits great. I think, it, and especially. Um, if you're on your own, it gives like another dimension, doesn't it? Yeah. Or if you've got big teenagers at home, you can do it with them as well, whatever. Yeah. Um, Emma, do you want to? Uh, yeah, very, very briefly, um, just on the topic of, of stuff in general and what it means to us. Um, um, I have very, very little to declutter because three years ago I moved country and um, we went in a car, so we couldn't take any of our furniture, or any, I mean, you know, all of my sort of lifetime's worth of, uh, you know, bulky stuff, all my clothes. I, I, I took a rucksack of my own stuff with me, but literally that was it. And um, we were in a car with my son, my partner, our, our two dogs, and then just, you know, practical things like pots, pans, things that we needed for life. But we didn't really take anything that was frivolous. Um, and um, I've not really accumulated loads of clutter, because I think you only really accumulate excess when you stay still for a long time and or, and certainly sort of traveling people they only ever have essentials with them for example and um i, I was looking around for for something to go through for this session <laughs> i went through my my little luxury stash of sewing haberdashery things and it was like pom-poms in every different shade of, of pink wow. and, um, i've got some turquoise ones and i just thought sometimes it's really things of, uh, like that have no value but have like no, loads of I've never seen it and it just make me happy pump pump <laughs> I, I, I like my wool I know I've got baskets of wool and yeah. I lo love my wool yeah colorful I thread love. and stuff like that um they're not a lot of use really. <laughs> 
you know, throw someone a rope or, you know, but uh, lace, threads, all that stuff makes me happy. And it's a little bit frivolity and, and just colour. Yeah, really. keep it happy. Brilliant. So what is our, what's our next subject? What are we doing and when are we doing it? Are we doing an evening this week or are we doing days? You're on mute, Julie. Keep trying to be good and put it on mute so I'm not making a noise. Um, we were going suggesting one this week in the evening, so I was going to suggest that Thursday is probably better than the Friday one. So should we do Thursday in the evening? Yeah, that's Everybody fine. up for that? We try and do it at 8 o'clock. Give, have time, give people time to have tea. God, I'm showing my northern roots there, aren't I? They can have their tea, have dinner, oh. or supper, whatever it is, wherever you are in the country. <laughs> I was trying to get my, I, I was going on holiday with my mum and I had to cancel her train ticket to come to London to get on the plane because obviously we're not going anymore. <laughs> and I said, I'm just cancelling my mother's ticket. And the person at LNER wrote back saying, has your mum got the tickets? I thought, well, they're definitely up in the northeast then. <laughs> <laughs> is your mum got the tickets? Yes, my mum's got the tickets. Your, mom, your mom. <laughs> okay. okay, so and what's the subject? What are we doing on? It was supposed to be about nourishing yourself. Okay. What what's the subject? Nourishing yourself. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm good at that. <laughs> that could be food, or that could be also be about yeah. things around you. Yeah, and how, how you stop picking? Can someone take it for yeah. board? You know, that's a good yeah. one. Yes, yeah. got tons of ideas. I can comfort share. eating. Comfort yeah. eating, yeah. Okay, there's not too much in the fridge, so I can't comfort eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, we'll see you. Um, I'll send a note out on that um, on Thursday, so we'll see you then. Brilliant, and do tell your friends as well. So that we can. Um, anything they've got, you've got my email. It's Julie at Marion Stewart. So if you need anything, just send me an email. So it's <laughs> Thursday at eight o'clock. Yeah, that's England time. Please, right? sorry, it won't be eight o'clock your time. It will be three, three o'clock in, in the afternoon. Oh, so it's five hours. Okay, great. You're Thank back you. five hours early. So. Okay. Right. See you then. Bye. See you then. Okay, keep communicating with each other. Thank yeah. you. Bye. 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 Bye.